Venezuela has recently come under fire for refusing humanitarian aid from the United States and Brazil. American pundits have said that this is proof that President Nicolas Maduro supports poverty and deserves to be ousted. After all, why would anyone turn down humanitarian aid, right? Well, it's not that simple. First of all, saying that Venezuela is refusing aid is simply incorrect. Venezuela has accepted aid that is from its allies like Russia, China, Iran, and Cuba. Russia recently delivered 300 tons of aid to Caracas, which the Maduro government accepted with open arms. What the Maduro government is refusing, however, is US and Brazilian aid. But isn't aid neutral? Does it matter that it's American aid and not Chinese or Russian aid? Well, it actually does. The most obvious question we need to ask ourselves is why Washington wants to send humanitarian aid to Venezuela. After all, if the United States really wanted to help Venezuela, why wouldn't they just end their own sanctions regime against the country as the Maduro government has repeatedly demanded? Well, the answer to that question is actually pretty simple because Washington talks about their goals fairly openly. The aid has nothing to do with humanitarianism and everything to do with regime change. Humanitarianism is simply the cover story they're using to disguise their true motives. Well, President Trump made a very uh, significant historical decision yesterday to recognize uh, Juan Guaido as the uh, interim president of Venezuela. It's consistent with the Venezuelan constitution. It's also consistent with American interest to get rid of this authoritarian government that's inviting into Venezuela countries with interest hostile to ours. The U.S. used security concerns to justify invading Iraq in 2003. It used humanitarian concerns to justify bombing Libya in 2011 and it used humanitarian concerns repeatedly to justify the ongoing bombing and occupation of Syria. Washington wants to replace the socialist Maduro government with the right-winger Juan Guaido, who has publicly stated his intention to privatize Venezuela's vast resource wealth. The US is going to use humanitarianism the same way it has in the past to make this change. In fact, Elliot Abrams, the current US envoy to Venezuela, sent weapons to the anti-government Contra rebels in Nicaragua in aid shipments where weapons were hidden among food and medical supplies. The unfolding scandal became known as the Iran-Contra scandal. This is probably why Trump appointed Abrams to oversee the Venezuela coup. He's got a lot of experience using humanitarian aid as a Trojan horse for regime change. As far as this latest aid package goes, it's pretty clear that it's not about aid. Well, look, the aid is going to get through, and I think ultimately the question is whether it gets through uh, in, in a way that he's cooperative with or in a way that he's not. This aid is so good, it actually has to be forced on people. We have to ask ourselves why the U.S. is so desperate to get this relatively small $20 million aid package into Venezuela when it's upholding a sanctions regime that has cost Venezuela upwards of $38 billion. 38 billion minus 20 million is 37 billion 980 million. In other words, this aid, if it even is aid, is insignificant compared to the damage the sanctions have caused. The sanctions regime prevent countries and companies from doing business with and lending money to Venezuela, which catalyzed the massive devaluing of the Venezuelan currency, the Bolivar. So the economic crisis in Venezuela is a direct consequence of the sanctions. Venezuela wouldn't need aid if the sanctions regime were simply lifted. You were aboard one of those U.S. military flights this weekend. What's in those aid shipments and how long before the people in Venezuela will see them? Now, basic goods and commodities, Anna, that could be found at an everyday grocery store, things like uh, rice, beans, lentils. Uh, but right now, not in Venezuela. There's even uh, hygiene kits, uh, toothbrushes, toothpaste, uh, nutritional biscuits to help those children that are malnourished suffering from this crisis. The media claims that the aid package is composed solely of food, sanitary products, and medicine. But earlier this month, Venezuelan authorities found a shipment of American-made M16 pattern rifles sent from Miami in the storage yard of Arturo Michelena International Airport in Venezuela. So the same country that's sending aid to Venezuela is also sending assault rifles? But if we remember Elliot Abrams history of hiding weapons in aid shipments, this contradiction makes sense, and there's no reason to think he's not doing it again. Senator Marco Rubio, the one seen in the previous clip, tweeted a not-so-subtle death threat to Maduro, posting a picture of Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi before and after NATO-backed rebels captured and killed him, implying that the same thing would happen to Maduro. These are the faces of the Venezuela aid package. These faux humanitarians have stated their desire to kill this man, and Maduro has every right and reason to be skeptical of that. 
But Kay, what about all the headlines saying the Venezuelan National Guard is setting aid trucks on fire? I understand being skeptical of aid, but why do they have to burn food? Well, recently surfaced video actually showed that it was opposition protesters throwing Molotov cocktails, as they're known to do, at these trucks which started the fire, making this yet another clever media distortion to demonize Venezuela. Finally, we have to ask ourselves perhaps the most important question, which is if the people backing this aid package have ever supported humanitarianism. On one hand, we've got Donald Trump. You know, notorious humanitarian Donald Trump. The same guy that beat Drone King Barack Obama's eight-year drone strike record in a single year in office. The same guy who called the still-colonized country of Haiti a shithole country. That guy. And on the other, we've got Jair Bolsonaro, who said that the 1964 Brazilian dictatorship should have killed, quote, at least 30,000 people, and described himself as a proud homophobe. So if you've ever thought that Donald Trump's rhetoric regarding immigration and Latino people was racist, why should his attitude towards Venezuela be any different? If Donald Trump actually cared about poverty, he would start by sending aid packages to Flint, Michigan, Oakland, Detroit, or the Bronx. As you watch this video, nearly 40 million Americans are experiencing poverty. Every single penny spent on meddling in Latin American affairs instead of American infrastructure, jobs, education, or healthcare is an attack on poor and working people in this country. 